Hi, everybody. Tim Hughes here. I'm the CEO and co-founder of DLA Ignite. With me today, I've got Eric Doyle. Hello. Hi, Eric. Hi, good uh, to see you. Yeah, it's good to see you. E Eric and I are going to talk about practical advice to crush your number using social selling. So where can people get hold of you, Eric? People can get hold of me on, on LinkedIn. Um, Eric Doyle is the name. You'll find me. Big, big gaudy background picture in this face. Um, Clubhouse uh, at Crux Eric. Um, you'll find me on Twitter at, uh, at Eric underscore Crux. And you can get me on email at Eric at consultcrux.com. And you're big on social, aren't you? Very big on social. It's, it's what I do for a living. It's, uh, I help, help people crack the code and, uh, and get the best from it as they can. Yeah, absolutely. So your, your background is actually in um, um, oil and gas health and safety. It was uh, even even taking a step before that really, really quickly started uh, started out life as a, an, an apprentice electrician, as did all the males in my family. It was a, a male doyle thing. <laughs> yeah, we were we were all all electricians, a sparkies and uh, went offshore in oil and gas in 1990, spent 10 years offshore, about halfway through that time offshore, I converted into health and safety. So I followed a different path. Um, and then uh, came on shore in 2000, stayed in health and safety for a while, and then was yanked by the collar and pulled over and given an opportunity to learn about and get into sales marketing in BD, which set me off on a new course in life, which I just absolutely loved. But I was trained very much in a in a, an old school Miller Hyman style blue sheets all stuck all over my face kind of uh, approach. Red flags. Um, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Red flags, blue sheets, all of that. And um, had had a very kind of like this is how you do it. This is the formula. This is how sales marketing and BD works. Very traditional, very old school. And I then went on and progressed through quite quickly through sales marketing and BD roles into general management. And my last couple of gigs in the corporate world were as um, managing director, board member of small oil and gas service companies. Right. And then you had like an epiphany around social, didn't you? You were working on some deal or something, and and. Something happened. What was it? Yeah, well, as as uh, you know, I, I now I'm in the beautiful position where I speak to management teams uh, and I see myself back then on the screen today. Um, and back then, 2017, going into 18, I linked in social media for me. Social media for me as, a, as an MD at the time was a, was a fun thing. That's where you post photographs of your holidays and barbecues and mountain biking. Mm -hmm. And um, LinkedIn was when, when our marketing colleague came in on a Thursday and said, can you repost that thing that I've just posted can you can you share it and that's what we did that's what we did but one one day I remember I did something quite unusual for me I wasn't particularly vocal or present on any social media channels for business I saw something from a potential prospect of ours asking a question I was quite it was a technical question I was quite insulted about how our competition back then had responded it was very salesy it was very you know you need this and we're available and we'll give you quotes and prices today Yep. So I took a deep breath and I, I responded back saying, we'd like to know more information about this. We'd like to understand your problems and we'd like to, you know, get 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 to know, get to know you a little better, which worked really, really well. Ultimately, the punchline was that that li little microcosm response resulted in a really profitable project, really put us in good standing with a really, really major client. Uh, and we won that job a couple of years running and, and kind of unseated our biggest competition. When we unpacked that, and and did the checks and balances when i said to the sales team who were all high-fiving themselves at the kind of action after action review there was this sort of one hand clapping after all the celebrations were all going and i said how come none of you were involved in the start from this how 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 does someone talking to someone on linkedin result in ebitda I don't, I don't understand that. Can anyone explain to me how a couple of keystrokes on LinkedIn, a conversation which moved into DMs, which moved into, can you come and visit us? How does, how does that progress and become profit? I don't understand that, guys. Does anyone understand that? And none of us had the answer back right. then. None of us. None of us. So, so fast forward to now, um, you're actually doing social selling as, a, as, a, as your job. Yeah, you yeah. Business that does social selling. I do, yeah. Um, so, so tail end of nineteen, I got out of corporate, decided to set up in my own, um, uh, on our own, my, my wife and I, but very confused back then. Very confused, you know. So, 
I, I said, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a decent sales marketing BD guy. I'm going to go out and I'm going to sell myself to companies to help them so they can get big company sales marketing BD uh, for a reasonable price and yep. no commitment to salary from a sort of contractual basis. Yep. My wife's a very, very talented HSEQ person. Right, let's split the company and that's what we'll do. A kind of weird, porcupiney, spiky company. We'll do your sales marketing BD and we'll do your HSEQ. Um, and then I read a book by this guy this this guy Tim Hughes. I read this yeah. book and yeah. uh, I, I I thought there's 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 definitely something here, but I don't really understand it. Had a couple of calls with you, got my mind into and hey presto, um, after after immersing myself completely into the social selling world and uh, and getting a handle on it, I now I now have completely pivoted our business and this is all we do now. This is all we do. Um, so we're completely focused on taking our customers through that journey of we don't know what to do with social through to um, social maturity and getting all the best that they can from social media platforms. Okay. 100%. You, you use a term. I know that you've used it a lot. Digital dominance. What What do you mean by that? I think I think that that term sort of sort of crept out of my pores when one day I realised I was actually I was actually taking um, some clients through one of our modules. Um, and I was trying to explain to them what, what this was about. So, you know, this isn't all about LinkedIn. This is about multi-channeling. This is about this is about dominating the space. M multi-channeling, uh, you mean you mean Twitter and, and Yes, absolutely. Um, Whatever we need to be. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So so what we want to do is we want to get our presence, we want to have our emails attached to accounts and link linking all of these together. We want to be linking hashtags, we want to be doing all of this stuff. And one of the guys said, why? Why why would we do that? It's just this is just not all about LinkedIn and looking good on LinkedIn. And my answer just poured out of me. I said, this is about digitally dominating your competition. This has been the digitally dominant voice in your marketplace, in your sectors, and digitally obliterating your competition. And there was this kind of silence. And that's kind of like, right, okay. So this is this is when someone presses down and makes those little electrical connections on a keyboard, which ask a question to Google about the kind of things that you do, that you're the answer every time. And we ain't going to do that just by putting flowers on our profile and putting out content every couple of days on LinkedIn. This yeah. is about complete digital dominance where, you know, Google and Bing and all of the other search engines only have one option when they're asked those kind of questions. When, when they look around, the digital highways, there's a big glowing ball of fire, which is you guys, which is you. all of you, and all of you, yeah. all your content and your profiles and everything is offered up as the response. So that was where the digital dominance thing came from. So so one of the things that, so, so you've taken a business and you launched it in a pandemic. Mm -hmm. So you launched it, what, March, April, about... We registered in February of 20. Right. <laughs> And then it will, and then the world fell off a cliff. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Right. So, so, you know, so how, how, I, remember, how... I remember, I remember saying to Sarah when we were on the way to the accountants hmm. to because we'd just been incorporated and we were going to sort out, you know, our p's and q's with our accounts. I remember saying to Sarah with a cup of coffee, "Well, this thing in China looks pretty serious." Yeah, yeah. seriously, seriously, yeah. So, so you, so you launched the, a company in the middle of the pandemic. Um, here we are a year later. So, so where are you? Um, you know, um, how are you doing? Ter terrific. I mean, it's, you know, I, I tug my forelock and bracket everything with. Um, I don't mean any of this in a sort of uh, uh, a, a, an easy-handed way or, or or to be sensationalistic, because I know that there's lots of people struggling. But um, we uh, we've done really well. It, it it hasn't been extremely easy. We've worked really hard. Um, we've brought on, we've onboarded um, a lot of clients, which is great. Mm. Um, clients that want to go through that that journey of, you know, be, you know, we don't really know what to do with social. Can you help us? Yes, absolutely. Let's convert everything we're doing and put it onto digital through social. Um, yeah. We've uh, we've taken on some uh, some associates, which is great. So we've got a couple yeah. of associates and a couple of people waiting in the wings to join too. So in terms of growth, we've we've grown. Um, and it's been a, a hard but very rewarding year. Um, I think we struck it. I think we struck the balance really well with um, with having a product and service suite that people really want and really yeah. need. 
Um, I'm not going to say it's a, it's you know that there's that there's companies knocking. A lot of companies need to be exposed to this and understand it to realise that they're even missing a trick. But generally, those that we present to and we pitch to and we we show them the way, they get it. So yeah. we've been we've been. Yeah, there's been a little bit of a rub of the green, but mostly down to hard work and good people. But it's all been socially driven. Every single aspect of it, every single aspect of it, every purchase order, every every bit of inbound, every bit of pipeline, every one of our associates, all digital. So, <laughs> Everything. So, so I, I get that, but you must have spent some money on on advertising. Not a penny. Not no, a single. Nothing at all. Nothing. Right. So, so you must have a big email database that you um, email uh, to. Um, no, uh, no, nothing, nothing right. at all. We 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 decided, um, we decided it was all about social from day one. We were going to be a purely social company. Every right. single so, thing. So about you must have called, called people to to get them to to come along to. The... Never made a single call. Never. Done. The only phone calls we make are maybe when someone. Maybe one of the accounts departments of one of our clients wants to call us to talk about an invoice or something like that. Um, it, everything is through social. Every single aspect of what we do is through social. The one thing that we did spend money on, and actually we're thinking about being really bold for a little while, is our, our Squarespace website, um, which, which we kind of look at every couple of months and say, what is the point of this? What is the point of this? Um, you're kind of supposed to have a website, right? Yes, you're kind of supposed to have one. So, but to be at, to to be re realistic about this, all of our relationships are built on social. All of mm -hmm. our conversations that lead to commercial interaction are from social. Mm -hmm. um, when people say, "We'll go and have a look at your website and we'll make a decision," I go, "Oh no, actually, we haven't put a lot of effort into our website because nothing happens there. Mm -hmm. Nothing happens." I'm thinking of putting a, a a thing on our website, just having one page say, "You can find us at these social media sites." Well, well, we 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 actually had a um, our first website. Um, Adam Gray, you know, my business partner, spent a day and a half in WordPress putting it up, um, and then we decided we were going to change it. To, so we couldn't decide what we would change it to, so we changed it to exactly what you said, which is um, a, a page saying. Um, and so we didn't have a we didn't have a website for eighteen months. It made no difference. No, nothing no. at all. No, I, firm, I firmly believe we could quite happily take our little Squarespace website down or just have a black page that says Crux and here's a here's the links to our, our social accounts. And it would it would do nothing to impact our, our cash flow or our, our, our pipeline. So you're so so you're you've got this, got to this stage where you're a totally social company that you've launched in a pandemic. You've grown by 400 percent. Um without spending a penny on um, advertising, email, or cold calling. No. Um, what type of witchcraft is this? <laughs> Great question. Great question. And, and I wish it was, I wish it, I wish it was, uh, I wish it was uh, that simple as just a little magic wand. It's, it's hard work. It's hard, hard work, focus, energy, commitment. It's sticking to a plan and a process. Okay, joking aside, what sort of results have you got for got for your clients? You know, what 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 are they getting? Um, so so you, you know, as you said, this isn't just flowers on your profile, is it? No, no, not at all. This is this is that that going back to that whole piece. This is about that digital dominance piece. This yeah. is about being the answers to those questions. So, yeah. if that's all well and good, digital dominance, throwaway term, flowers on your profile, throwaway term. Uh, you know, we want we want to make sure that we leave a lasting impact with our clients so that their complete view on how pipeline is created and how revenue is driven into that business comes from social and is driven by so, social. So I guess one of the things that one of the measures could be, are your clients still spending money on other forms of marketing? And to to a company, the answer is no. Right. And I've been held up, I've run, I've run in parallel with um with um, email marketing. I've run in parallel with uh, Google Ads. I've run and all of that, and uh, it doesn't take too long it before they switch all that off. Before they switch all of that off, because yeah. they realise, you know, I'll get it. I'll get the big flare up at the start. Well, you know, we've we've spent twenty five grand on uh, on Google Ads, you know, and and in three months we've had we've had three reasonable looking leads, and if any one of those comes off, it pays for the whole campaign. Yeah, okay, fine. How about we triple? 
your sales qualified leads every yeah. month from now on. Yeah. Let's 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 hold that up against the three lukewarm leads. Let's have a let's have a higher target in which to go for. <laughs> yeah, totally. Because yeah. if that's your high watermark, then we've got a yeah. real problem because we're going to obliterate that. Because it's too low. Because it's too low. Yeah. That's ridiculous. I, I, I find I find in organisations that they're their their expectation from marketing is so low that you go into organizations and you actually have to tell them that they're going to get less because otherwise they just don't believe you totally totally um uh, one one client said to me um we have uh, I'll, I'll change the numbers but i'll keep the i'll keep the differential the same we have um we have 10 sales qualified leads a month um, if we can get to 12 by the end of this program, that'll be a win. And that's what we identified in our strategy work. That'll be a win. Um, in terms of the differential change, that would equate to going from the 10, obliterating the 12 target and being up near 30. Right. You know, so that's the game changers that people see and go. And also, I like the fact that the more the more softer angles, the more kind of, um, the more kind of, uh, uh, that yeah, the kind of the, the more sort of gut feel um, when I get them to explain. Uh, one of my clients put it really, really well recently when I said, "What's what have you seen as the biggest difference?" Because you held me up against a, an email marketing company that sent out thousands of spam emails a day, ruined your reputation with clients, and just harassed clients <laughs> with the mm -hmm. emails. But you told me at the start, "But you're getting some good stuff." Mm -hmm. How do you compare the two? And uh, I thought this was beautiful. This was from a. Uh, an older chap um, who was just getting into social, and his his uh, his words were: "When we got a lead from that, it was watery and lukewarm. When we get a lead from social selling, it's red hot, right? Red hot. It's real. It's with the buyer. It's with the interested party. It's live. And if that person if that person is interested, we're on a call the next day." We're not we're not then into a, a convincing kind of blah blah blah. They've built the relationship, they've built the trust, they've built the influence, they understand each other, and a connection is made and it's mm -hmm. solid. And I love that. And and so from a um people that are watching, what can you give them some advice about? You know, we've got about three minutes left. What mm -hmm. what advice would you give them if they were starting in social selling? What things do they need to do? Um what they what they need to do is um, number one is sit down and work out what they want to be. There's no right. point in trying to trying to faff about with hints and trips, ticks and trips and all sorts of fancy fancy flicks and all of that. Is sit down um, and write out and work out a deep set social media strategy. If you're going to right. take this seriously, because I, I I was on a call just earlier where someone came on and said. Hey, isn't it great? Um, um, I've I've learned this tip, and 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 you can do this. You can get your voice um, on the on your LinkedIn profile, and it's like that's great, but it doesn't generate revenue for you. Correct, correct. Get to the point where we know that each person in this organisation or the person that's in this team that's going to be carrying this forward hmm. um, understands that every every single thing we do on social has a has a purpose. Yes, it's for a reason, and that everything we do, every keystroke, every post, every comment, every piece of engagement links back to an overarching company strategy. Right, what we want to achieve, which ultimately must filter down to sales qualified leads, revenue and possibly EBITDA if you're going to take it that far. So, so, so everything that you're doing on social is basically there to drive to drive revenue. You, in effect, if you're if you're not driving revenue on social, you are cost to the organization and you shouldn't be doing it. 100 percent, 100 percent. Posting stuff every day um, for visibility um, because we need to be there and we need to be seen um is 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 just a waste of time just yeah. a waste of time unless it's feeding back into and driving into and driving an overarching company strategy for social actually that's a it's a really horrible thing to say but i think if you don't have that then anything else that i would say right now would just be silly and throw away right you know what i mean so yeah it, i do it's yeah, all, yeah it's all rooted in the strategy then we can talk about training the team and having a process and doing all of that um but that's more complex and we'd need another 20 minutes to talk about that. <laughs> um, my, my overarching thing is, for goodness sake, if you're going to take this seriously, and if you're interested in increasing that pipeline and getting all the frills and benefits that come with, with being strategic with social, you need a strategy. Right, yeah. 
Uh, and anything you know in the in the dying two seconds of the any, any other piece of advice that you'd give? Um, reach out to specialists. I know that's again that might sound a little bit pitchy and salesy, but I don't mean it like that. Um, because you might reach out to someone that's not me. Um, but reach out to a specialist. Um, unless you've sunk your heart and soul into this, and you do this all the time, uh, it's a very complex issue. But, but ca it can be vastly simplified by speaking to specialists and experts about. Uh, not the, the one hour masterclass people that will take 350 quid off you for a one hour masterclass. I'm talking about people who have transformed an organization, people who have a legacy and a track record that's discoverable and referenceable. You know, go, go back and check out, you know, ask them, what companies have you transformed and can I speak to the CEO? Mm. That's how serious and, and, this is. And actually look at the people that are on, on social that supposedly they've transformed. And, yeah. and uh, 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 is, is, it, is it obvious that there is a transformation that's taken place? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, big time. So test them. Test them. Make sure they're experts. Um, there are a few phonies out there. Um, make sure they're experts. Make sure they've transformed the company. Make sure they can add real value to what's going to be for your organization. You might not know this yet going to be a game changer. Everything about you, once you go through this, is going to change. Your language, your metrics, um, the way you behave, uh, how you appear, everything, the way you talk internally, it's all going to change for the better. Eric, thank you so much for coming on today and sharing your insight. It's been fantastic. And I, I'm, I'm just amazed at how you've taken a company um, and grown it, but you know, from, from one person to four people in, in just 12 months. It's just amazing, as well as obviously you've transformed a whole bunch of clients as well. Um, you must be very proud. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm also, um, I have no fingernails and uh, I'm a coffee addict. <laughs> and and so he used to have a full head of hair. <laughs> <laughs> Which I now wrap around my jaw to keep yeah. warm. Yeah, exactly. It, uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Yeah, no, no, no. It's it's just amazing. And, and, and you should be very proud of it. And, uh, you know, as a business leader, you know what it's like to, to take any to take any business and, multi and and increase it by 400 percent in a pandemic. It's who else has done that? Oh, I have no idea. I have no idea. And we have been a bit kind of um, head down and getting on with it. So I haven't really I suppose you should uh, come up and take a breath and have a look around because I'm sure there are others. But um it's uh, it's been a it's been a an interesting old time. So uh, remind people where they can get hold of you. Uh, LinkedIn, uh, you'll find me Eric Doyle. You will find me on Clubhouse at Crux Eric. You'll find me on Twitter at Eric underscore Crux. Uh, where else? Um, loads of different places. Email is uh, Eric at Consult Crux. Right, and and basically the usual um, what I say to people it, it, for most people I interview if they if they can't find you they're not looking hard enough. I mean. <laughs> if they can't find you on LinkedIn, is it's Eric with a C, by the way, not Eric with a, a K. In, in case anybody um, is um, is um, is wondering. So, thank you so much for coming on today and sharing that with us. It's been, been fantastic. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Tim. Brilliant. Thank you. Cheers, Eric.